To get to the Character Lab portion of the Character Builder, click the Characters panel. For this, we're going to open up a character that we've already created. I'm going to select this character named Hat Guy, and then I'm going to click Edit to open the Builder. You can see here that this character is already completed, and it has all of its animation states done. So we're not going to worry about any of the art or animation this time around. Instead, we're going to click this button that says Character Lab. Once you have opened the Character Lab, you'll notice that your character is now on a stage under a spotlight, and below them is a panel with a bunch of different buttons and sliders. These buttons and sliders will help you configure the abilities of your character. You can do a lot of fun things with these settings, and we're going to go over most of them in this video. Let's start with the DNA section. This first slider up here is the character's speed. There are three speed settings. The first speed is the default speed. The second speed is faster, and the third speed is the fastest. Down here we have a slider for the character's size. Similar to what I did with the speed setting, I'm going to make this the third setting for size, so you can see the extreme difference between this and the default. When designing games based around large heroes, you're going to want to make sure you have enough room for them to make it through, as they'll have trouble getting through tight spaces. The next section we have over here is the life section. There's a slider here that can change how many hearts a character has. You can have up to nine and as little as one heart. There are also three different effects to choose from when your character is defeated. These are purely visual. Now we're gonna move on to the jump power section. In this section, you can decide whether you want your character to have one jump, a double jump, or if they are some type of flying character. You can also change some visual effects of how a character looks when they're double jumping or when they're flying. The style of flying you see right now is probably more appropriate for a bird character or something with wings, whereas the jetpack would be better for something robotic or mechanical, and the ghost choice would be better for something more spiritual or ghostly. Unlike the double jump, the flying choices all have subtle gameplay differences, so they will control a little bit differently from each other. The last section we have here is the attack section. You can choose between two attack styles, stomping or throwing. The stomping attack is the default, where if you jump on an enemy you will defeat them. If you select Stomp, you cannot use the throwing attack, and vice versa. These are mutually exclusive. Since we already know what the Stomp attack is like, let's take a look at one of the throwing attacks. I'm going to select the fire element and see how that plays out. Now let's take a look at what happens to the throwing attack when we change it to a magic element. Your magic beams will freeze enemies, turning them into platforms that you can step on. But be careful, before too long they'll break out and they can damage you once again. Let's take a look at the lightning choice now. This will let your character throw electric energy orbs that ricochet off the walls. Now that we've experimented with Character Lab and I've configured my character, let's go up in the left corner and open up the game builder so we can see how this character works in an actual game. I'm going to go down here to where Milo is and I'm going to change my hero to Hat Guy, the character that I configured. Once hero settings are open, click on Milo again to open the character library and I'm going to select Hat Guy. 
Notice how he has all the configurations that we set earlier. It's pretty cool. I'm going to hit save. Even though this character saved the configurations that we set in Character Lab, you can still modify this character on a game by game basis. If you'd like the character to have more or less health in one game than another, you can do that, and it won't affect the character in your library. We focused a lot on how this character will play as a hero, but let's take a look at how this character will behave if we make it an enemy with these configurations. To decorate this enemy with the character that I want, I'm going to go over to the Asset tab. I'm going to click on one of the empty slots with the plus on it, and it's going to open the library. I see the character I want, so I'm going to select him. As an enemy, you can see that his configurations still apply. He's using the electrical attack, and he's double jumping with the same visual effect that I set for the hero. You may have noticed that he took three hits to be defeated, the same amount of hearts that the hero has. They're essentially the same exact character. Just like the hero, we can also go in and change the enemy's configurations without impacting the character in our library. You can also see that these changes did not impact our hero and our hero retained the settings he already had.